yeah. So this is a big talk. And so my topic for today is going to be on the principle of inclusion and exclusion, which is usually abbreviated to as just P I E. And that's just for short. Some people just directly say pi, although that's just not clear enough. And so this is like a basic overview of PIE. So this is the case for two. This is the case for like two cases. So if you don't know, um, so what PIE counts? So basically it says that you can see it here. So basically the number of stuff that's in this stuff, that's, sorry. The number of stuff that's being counted in here is equal to the number of stuff in here plus the number of stuff in here, minus the number of stuff in here. And so the reason for that is because, let's see, let's say that something's only in yellow, then it's counted once in here. And if something's only in blue, then it's counted once here, which, and it's only counted once because it's once here. But if something is here in green, then it's being counted twice because once in here and once in here. So then you have to subtract that one for the middle area to also be counted exactly one time. And of course, this pattern can continue on, but for most intents and purposes, this is about sufficient. So here is an example problem uh, for the topic. So everyone can like look at it for like one minute or so and try to do this. Okay, so I'll assume all of you have had some time to try this from on your own. So we can see that it's either, ouch. Okay, so it's either computer science or math or both. So the number who have CS as a major is 25. And the number of math as a major is 13. And the number in both is eight. So that means that we can look at this theorem above well, this statement of PIE above. And so that basically tells us that the number in the class is equal to the number taking CS plus the number of math minus the both. Okay. And so that means that we can just see that the answer is just 25 plus 13 minus eight or 30 students. And yeah, any questions? Um, okay, well, uh, I guess there are no questions. So I'll we'll just go on to the next one. So this is the formula for PAE in general. So in general, so basically the number of elements, okay, so the number of stuff, which I'll just call elements from now on because that's how it's called, it's called in math. The number of elements total in N 
set of stuff AI is this fancy thing, which is basically just saying that it's basically just so I'll just explain this in a more intuitive way with the, just some no, lower number examples. So let's say there's sets A, B, C. So then it would be A plus B plus C minus a u b minus a u c minus b u c plus a cup b cup c and so that's how pie works for three numbers and for four numbers it would be this is about the same except that it would just be Sorry, A plus B plus C plus D minus A cup B minus A cup C minus A oh, it's cap, sorry, not cup. A cap D minus B cap C minus B cap D minus C cap D plus a cap B cap C plus A cap B cap D plus A cap C cap D plus B cap C cap D minus A cap B cap C cap D. And so this long thing is just PIE for four numbers with A, U, B, U, C, U, D. And I guess this is probably slightly more intuitive to understand than what's written here, but like this is true in general. So, yep. And so next we have another example. And so this involves Fehi with some more variables. And so I'll give all of you a minute or so to try this on your own before I go over it.
Okay, well, that should be about enough time to get a start on this problem. So we can see that there are eight people total, and basically the important part is no one receives their gifts back. And so we want to find the number of ways to distribute the gifts. So, sorry. So we can let set, let's say, A be the number of ways to distribute the gifts such that everyone gets a gift. And this doesn't this does not care if they get their own or not. And so now we let A, I be the set of ways somewhat person number I get their own gift. And so what we're trying to do is find this. So since, sorry, since AI is the number of ways for person I to receive their own gift, that means that there are seven factorial ways for the rest of the gifts, and that's because there, we, this doesn't, our, us saying that person I get their own gift does not affect whether others get their own gift or not, because he got his own gift. Now, if person I did not get his own gift, that would mean that someone else also did not get their own gift, but since we know that person I got their own gift, it doesn't matter, affect anything else. So, yeah. So, AI is equal to 7 factorial, and if both person A, if both person I and person J, for some two different people, I and J, then there are six ways to choose six gifts for the third person, five gifts for the fourth person, and so on. So it's six factorial for here. And we can see that this just continues on, five factorial, four factorial, so on. So this means that the number of ways to distribute the gifts is just, once again, as a reminder, it's A minus A1, U A2, U, all the way to U A8. And this is equal to 8 factorial minus. And so here we have 8 times 7 factorial. And now we have add 8 choose 2 times 6 factorial. And the reason it's 8 choose 2 here is because there's eight choose two ways to choose the pairs. Because if you remember, the pairs are, need to be in ascending order or descending order. It doesn't really matter as long as each distinct pair of A's is counted exactly once. And so on. So there's also minus eight choose three times five factorial. And so on until the final term is eight choose eight times one factorial. And I don't think anyone wants to see the calculations being done because they're not fun. So I'll just say that the answer is 14,883. And just a fact related to the name written here. So the arrangement is basically just this number. It's basically this whole problem. It's basically just derangement. So derangement just basically is something where none of, so where a set of values is, um, where the order of the values in a set of values is changed around, and the number of weight that a derangement is just a, one possibility of the permutations such that no objects stay in the same place. And so what we found here is the number of derangements for, of eight objects. Okay, and so now Okay, um
All right, so I'll be starting to go over this problem now. So there's a unit square of a three by three unit square grid, and all of them are either blue or red. So each color is equally likely. We want to find the chance of a grid that does not have a two by two red square. So first of all, what you can realize is that this is a three by three grid, which looks something like this, although probably with a lot straighter lines. And so there's only four ways to have a circle of two by two square. And this, their centers are the, are the intersection points that I circled just now. So each has a probability one over two fourth of occurring. Now there are a total of six possible intersections. And so four of them have probability one over two to the six because they are intersections of this sort. Okay. There are intersections of this sort. And others have a probability of 1 over 2 to the 7th. Four, sorry, 4 of them have 2 to the 6th. And 2 of them have 1 over 2 to the 7th. The ones of the form 1 over 2 to the 7th are of this form. Okay, so now we need to add the probability that there's three of them together, which is always one over two to the eighth, and there's four possibilities here. And so the last case is when the entire grid is red, which is all four, and this has probability one over two to the ninth, and my PIE is being subtracted. So, yeah. So now if you calculate all of this together, then what you get is find that this is equal to, I believe 95 over 512. However, this is the opposite of what you want because this is the probability of a red square but you want the probability of not having red square. So one minus this is just 417 or 512. And of course, like Amy format, it says it's in the form of our n, and then it wants n plus n. So it's just 929. And so that's this question. So next up, we have this question. And so once again, I'll be giving a minute or two for people to try to figure this out on your own.
Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I think that's enough time. And so I'll start going over this now. So there are three delegates from three countries, and they're choosing chairs around a round table. And so we want to find the probability that each delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country. So first of all, all we do is basically we're going to use complementary counting and PIE, just like the last problem. So we can consider the delegates indistinguishable. Yes, I know that usually you consider humans distinguishable, but it doesn't really matter. It's just they're just different countries. So now. There, the number of ways to see the candidates, that means is just 9 factorial over 3 factorial cubed. And so this is just 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 over 6 times 6. And so the value of this is simply just, if you calculate it out, this is just 16, sorry, 1680. So next, there are three times nine and six factorial over three factorial ways, sorry, three factorial squared ways, where the candidates of all, of, for all three candidates of a country to sit together, which is the only case where some delegate does not sit next to at least one delegate of another country. And so the probability of this occurring, sorry, the number of ways for this occurring is just this number, which is 27 times 6 times 5 times 4. Oops. 27 times 6 times 5 times 4 over 6, which is just 540. So the number of ways for two candidates from two countries to sit together is just 3 times 9 times 4, which is simply just 108. And finally, there are 9 times 2, which is 18 ways for candidates from all the countries to sit in three blocks. And in case you're wondering what's going on and why we just ignore the fact that it's circular, we're finding a probability in the end, so everything will be canceled out, so it's fine. So technically this works for uh, for linear line two, but yeah. I don't know, this does not work for a linear line, but anyways, it works for a certain, you can technically consider like a kind of linear line because of the fact that we can just, it's just dividing and multiplying by a factor, which is the same for all of them, so it doesn't matter. So the number of arrangements we don't want is 27 times 20 minus The number of raters that we don't want is 540 minus 108 plus 18. And so this is just equal to, of course, sorry, 450. So this means that the, fraction, the probability that we want to find is just simply equal to this number, 1680, minus this number, 450, over this number, 1680. Because this is the number of bad cases. So yeah. So this is simply just, so first, first we can do is take out the zeros. So this 168 minus 45 over 168. And so this is just 123 over 168. And if you want, you can divide by 3 again to get 41 over 56. Actually, no, you should be dividing by 3 right, if you want. So the final answer is 41 plus 56, which is 97. And in Amy form, that would be 0, 097, but that doesn't really matter much. Okay, so it's gone past 530, sorry, 630. 
And so I'll just leave this homework, uh, homework problem behind. And so here. So there's an ordered sequence of 36 digits. And we want the property that the sum of the digits to get that, adding the digits to get a number and taking the last digit results in a digit not in the original sequence. 